welcome to part three of this series. My name is Jason and I'm putting together a kit guitar of a Les Paul Jr. that I got from Saga Musical Instruments. And uh, last episode, I did the staining of the body and the neck, did a blue Crystalac water-based stain. We're not using any grain filler because it's basswood. And even though I'm putting on the Crystalac water-based clear coat on top of this, I'm told that I don't need any sort of sanding seal or anything between the two to keep the stain from getting messed up by putting the clear coat on top of it now. So we're just gonna go straight to that. But first, I will do some decals for uh, the headstock because that sounds like a fun thing to do. So I'm gonna switch over to voiceover now and let's get at her. So first I broke out the old Photoshop, designed a headstock logo, uh, just went with Finestone, that's my last name. Thought I would number uh, all of these, and since this is my zeroth guitar, I'll put the number zero here, uh, sort of as a serial number, and uh, sort of as a tribute to Pete Townsend. And then isolate each of those sections, pull them up, knock them out, so that the what was white will just print to transparent. Save both of those separately. Then I'll pop open Microsoft Word, paste one of them in, flip it horizontally, so it's now completely backwards. Copy that a bunch of times, might as well use as much of the page and waste as little of the decal paper as possible. I have a feeling I'm going to uh, need more than one of these to get it right. And do the same thing with the zeros. And of course the zero is more or less symmetrical, but uh, not quite. I just wanna be uh, as exact as possible. We'll flip that one too. And then copy and paste as many of those will fit. And then let's print it onto the decal paper, onto the shiny side of the decal paper. Then I have this acrylic paint, and I'm gonna paint the parts that are transparent, that just go through directly to the transparent paper, so that now on the back of each of the decals, there will be this white to come through instead of the black of the guitar. And since it's surrounded by black, you hopefully will not see the white paint that isn't exactly contained in the letters that goes over the edge because these are very small letters and it's going to be hard for me not to spill over a little bit. So I painted this on. I actually did three coats of it to try to make it as consistent as possible. I didn't want any of the black underneath to show through. And of course did the same thing with the zeros. Now I did sort of cheat a little bit on my all in the apartment, all water-based non-toxic media. I got the spray to spray the decal to keep the print on and then it later turned out that actually you don't need that for a laser printer that's really for the ink toner printer so I didn't need it. Wet sanding using the 400 wet and dry paper. I had heard that the smoother the surface the easier the decal goes on. Dry that off. Now for the decal I, I put in new fresh water and put in some white glue which will hopefully keep the decal in place better so it doesn't uh, just curl up, peel off, fall off on its own. Yeah, I use my finger. So what? It's not like it's super glue. I'll be okay. Now I'll cut out the decals once the paint is dry. Cut it as close to the painted white parts as possible. I'm hoping that the black that printed will match with the black of the wood, but this minimizes it a little bit and pop that puppy in the water. I think the instruction said 30 seconds, but I only kept it for, what, about five seconds here, and then took it out, let it settle for a little bit, let the water do its magic, put a little water on the headstock, put this as close to in place as possible. I found out that having all that water there on the headstock makes it so you can move the decal a little bit after it's placed, but not that much, so you want to get it really as close as possible. Just sort of work the paper off, leaving the decal on. Oh, that looks pretty good. Pat out any air bubbles, take off some of the water, use a brush to smooth it out, more air bubbles out. And of course do the same thing with the zero. After that dries, I've got some white vinegar that I'm going to pat the decals down with. I have heard that this is supposed to minimize the uh, the line that'll be around the decal so you don't see it 
as much against the wood. I don't know if that's true, but might as well try. Then we'll spray the headstock a little bit more to secure the decal. I don't want that coming off. And I'll put more of the clear coat over it when I do the whole guitar. I got some denatured alcohol to clean off the body before clear coating. A little compressed air. And I'm using the Bright Tone from Crystal Lac as the clear coat. That's too much, I found out afterwards. I know that you're supposed to put light coats on. Never done this before, not sure what a light coat is. I dipped it in for like a second. If there's that much clear coat on your brush, you have put on too much. And as if that wasn't bad enough, you'll actually see I, I went back and put more on the brush with emphasis on more on. So much, see it drip. I did the back and the sides. I also learned after this that you shouldn't use both sides of the foam brush. You should just pick one side and just use that one. I'm not exactly sure why, and I'm not sure it made a difference, but you learn something new every step of the way. And when I was done doing the front, I saw runs down the side resulting in these drips on the bottom along the edges. I tried sanding those off. Turns out that was not a good idea. All that really happened was I took off a lot of the stain along the edges. A good way to get this stuff off is to use a razor blade. You see I've got tape along the sides, so the only part of the blade that's exposed is right here in the middle, about the same size as those drips. And you just scrape along it, and it should just take off the drips. And it kind of worked. And you could see it just peel up that little layer. That'll work pretty good. And hopefully, after I put more clear coat on this, the remaining spots will be less obvious. And to fix up those parts that I sanded through along the edge where the wood now shows through, I applied some new stain with a Q-tip. Of course, I had thrown away all the original color by now, so I sort of eyeballed a new one. I came out with something much bluer, but it's a tiny little amount, and uh, it's not really that noticeable unless you're looking at it, so don't look at it. Pro tip, hold on to any remaining stain that you have until you are completely done with the guitar. You might need to use it for touch-ups. Now back to the clear coat. I roughed up that one coat that was on there. I'm using the 400. I didn't want to sand too much because this is just the first clear coat layer. It would be a little too easy to go through it completely and start taking even more of the stain off. This is the second coat. Putting less on the brush. I do not want any more of these runs and drips. I did just the front and the sides. Let that dry for the full three hours that you're supposed to allow. They say allow two to three hours between coats before I then flipped it over and did the back. So technically it's taking twice as long as it should, but I didn't want to flip the guitar over and risk the clear coat not leveling itself as it dries. The Crystal Lac instructions for Bright Tone also say you should put on somewhere between two and five coats. I figured I'd shoot for three or four coats right in the middle. Checking the bottom for drips. In any cases that I saw them, I quickly wiped them off with a cloth. Scuffing it up again. The instructions say you should scuff between all layers except for the last couple that you do. So I'm doing this very lightly. Back to the denatured alcohol. Clean it again. And third clear coat starting with the back this time and the sides. After that dried, flipping it over and doing the same thing to the front. Using less and less every time on the brush and touching the brush as lightly as possible onto the wood so so much doesn't just pour out. And then when I was done after what ended up being five coats, I think, it looked pretty good. Time to put it up here and uh, let it cure. You're supposed to give it a day per layer, so it should be five, six days. It'll take a little longer. 
stir up the bright tone. Don't shake it. You don't want any bubbles to be in there. Let's do the headstock first. I think I ended up putting about four or five clear coats on there. We'll let that dry cure too. And in about a week, it'll be time to start putting the hardware on here and putting the neck on the body. So I'll see you next time to do that. Goodbye.